live again. All right. Good morning from Burlington, Vermont, Burlington United Pentecostal Church. We welcome you today. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Doesn't make any difference what is going on around me. I can still praise God. We live in an, un, in an uncertain time in this world. And we are going to take an opportunity to lift up praises to the God that created this world, regardless of the circumstances around us. And in leading into our service this morning, I want to read a quick verse, or read from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And you can read that when you get home. But this was a dire time for Jehoshaphat. In the nation of Israel, there were enemy all around them. And they went to the Lord in prayer because they made a place where they could go to the Lord in prayer. And the prayer that Jehoshaphat said unto the Lord was that we don't know what to do and we are without strength because the enemy is all around us. But our eyes are upon you. We live in a time where there's there's this unseen enemy all around of us, all around us, and that unseen enemy can seem to crowd in on us. You can't put a finger on it. You don't know where it is. You don't know how far it's gone. You don't know the full extent of it. You can't see it, taste it, smell it, touch it, hear it, but yet it's out there. And we're going to turn our eyes unto God. We're going to say, God, you know everything that's going on. Our eyes are on you. When the world says... To lock it down when the world says to distance yourself the Lord says that you can lift up your eyes right. to the hills from right. whence comes your help and you can draw nigh unto God right. no matter what so we're going to do that this morning we're going to we're going to pray here I'm praying for everybody that's able to tune in on the internet I'm praying for this church in Burlington Vermont I'm praying for this world God you know the extent of this in this COVID-19 and everything else that's going on in relation with it. And God, I thank you for knowing how to steer people's minds and their hearts towards you. I thank you, Lord, for the church taking this as an opportunity to truly draw nigh unto you. And Lord, I thank you for ministering your word and your spirit into every home, into every heart, into every mind, into every life that is able to view any kind of a church service this morning, that's taking any time to pray this morning, that's taking any time to get into the Word of God and find out what is going on. And Lord, I thank you for ministering in every home and in every heart. And Lord, as people are lifting up their eyes to you, lifting up their hands in praise to you, lifting up their voices in asking you, how do we get through this? What do we do? I thank you, Lord, that you are instantaneously right there encouraging and exhorting and helping and working with people, helping them to find you in the midst of this uncertain time. And in finding you, they're going to find who they really are, who they're supposed to be in you. And, Lord, I thank you for that ministry of reconciliation and restoration that you're performing right now. Lord, across this globe, as people turn their eyes to you because they're compassed about, they don't really know what to do. And if they'll turn their eyes to you, you will help. And Lord, I thank you for that help happening right now around the world. Join us now as we sing several songs and then I'll bring a message this morning and Sister Lion is going to sing and help us out. Praise the Lord, everyone. Such a joy to be able to, to worship the Lord here again on a Sunday morning, but knowing that the church is not restricted to the four walls, but we know the church is outside those four walls. You are the church, and we thank God for you. Whispered to my heart. 
fullness of joy and at your right hand uh, pleasures forevermore in the name of Jesus. I stand. If you turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2, I want to preach this morning about help me to understand. In the process of dealing with all of the uncertainties in the world today, and one of the questions that keeps cropping up is I need to understand. I need to understand how big is the problem? When will it be over? What should I do? Where should I go? How, much, how many people can I be in contact with? What is going on? Help me to understand. And from the Bible, I want to give us some perspective concerning what we need to understand for the hour that we are living in. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, it says in the King James Version, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree... Of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. And Romans 5, 18 through 21 says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came unto all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense may abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. The way we need to be able to view the current circumstance is the way we need to view all of the history of mankind on this planet. It says, In the day that you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
you shall surely die. And it says that by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. The whole problem that we deal with every single day is the sin problem. It's not the people over in some other part of the world. It's not the government agency that might be doing this or that. It's not the fact that we have to sit and isolate and self-quarantine and we're under various restrictions for who knows how long. It is that God has given this world another opportunity in a long string of opportunities to face the sin question right. and to turn to God and say, help me to understand what's going on. And the Lord would say, I want to save you from sin. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. What was lost? It was relationship. Relationship between God and us. And what got in the midst of that relationship was the willful choice to do something that God said is a deadly decision. That God says will result in death. And the man and the woman, Adam and Eve, committed the first sin. And because of that, the entire world, the entire world, the entire world, and everybody that dwells on this planet is subject to the fact that sin entered in by what Adam and Eve did in the garden, which was against what God told them to do. And now people are continually struggling to determine what's the difference between right and wrong, good and bad. What's the difference between holy and unholy, righteous and unrighteous, moral and immoral? And it's all wrapped up that without godly direction, we have no way of being able to pick those things apart to be able to say what is good or what is bad or what is right or what is wrong. Because of that loss of connection, people strive and they fight and they war against one another because of the thing that has entered into the world, which is sin. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. People are so concerned about who may suffer a demise in this current situation with the virus. People are very concerned about that. Well, let me set your mind at rest. The scripture says that it's appointed unto us once to die. In Hebrews 9, 27 and 28 and says and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation in John chapter 5 it says marvel not at this for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation it is appointed unto men once to die and after that the judgment death is such a very real part of the world we live in today death is such a very real part of that Jeez. and it is sad and it is unfortunate and it is devastating and it is so traumatic to see loved ones, to see people suffer yes. and to go through death. It is so traumatic. But the scripture says if we don't have hope in God, then death is a fearsome thing. Mm -hmm. Death is a terribly fearsome thing. I will tell you this. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not inviting death, but I'm not afraid to die. And I'll get to another verse that tells you why I'm not afraid to die. Let me just give you a, a, a sense of the numbers, the numbers that they appear. Now, you can find this in Wikipedia. It's the annual number of death, or death by the numbers, in terms of what happens in the world. In 2016, there were 17.65 million people that died from cardiovascular disease. There was almost 9 million that died from cancers. There was 3.5 million from respiratory disease. Diabetic blood and endocrine disease claimed another 3.2 million. And the, and the list goes on and on. You can see a brief 
printout of this year. You can go and look at it for yourself. And based upon the statistics, it says that in the United States of America, the United States of America this year alone will see about 2,750,000 people die from various and sundry causes. I am not trying to minimize the, the steps taken by our governments to limit the exposure of the COVID-19 virus. I am not minimizing that at all. What I am trying to help people understand that without God in your life, the fear of death will drive you to do very strange and unusual things. But the embracing of life, of, of our life in God, will cause us to be able to overcome that fear and to be able to reach out to a neighbor, reach out to a friend, pray for somebody over the phone, do things that are good and beneficial for everybody around us. We'll be able to do the most powerful thing that anybody could ever do on the face of this earth, and that is pray. Amen. Prayer is your most powerful tool right. when you talk about things that can be done of a positive nature. We read, I read it a little bit ago about Jehoshaphat. When the enemy came around the nation of Israel, they didn't know what to do. They said, we're coming to you. You're the one that put all this together. We've got a problem. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to deal with this. Our eyes are on you. Right. Tell us what to do. And the Lord said, hey, this is my fight. This is my battle. One thing you've got to understand about the COVID-19 situation is that it's no surprise to God. You've got to understand that this whole world situation has not caught God off guard. And he's wringing his hands wondering, what am I going to do about this? This is not something that's outside of his purview. God is still under control of the whole thing. And I will tell you, over time, we've seen various catastrophes happen over the thousands and thousands of years of man's history. And I'll say this categorically. All of those catastrophes, all of those problems, all of those situations were designed for one purpose and one purpose only, to get people's attention. It's another wake-up call to the world. And this time, the bars are shut down. And this time, the eateries are shut down. And this time, the, you, you're being told, stay at home, don't go out. You're, the, the beaches are vacant of, of the people that were populating them. Literally around the world, the beaches are vacant. And various venues are shut down. And what are people having time to do? They're having time to reflect on what is my life all about right. and what am I going to do about this and help me to understand what's going on. They'll, see, they'll search the government sites, help me to understand how bad it's going to be, what is it going to be over, what's my part in all of this. They'll search various sites, they'll talk to one another, they'll look for various explanations for all of this and God is trying to say, hey, wake up, yes. hey, yes. wake up. I am in control of all of this. Amen. And if you read your scripture, you'll find out that when people call God their God and they get out of line, God says, I'm going to send some stuff your way to help you get your wake up going. I'm going to send some stuff your way to help you get your ideas put in the right direction. I'm going to send some stuff your way to let you know you're not in control. This is not your world. Right. You didn't make it. You didn't design it. You didn't build it. You didn't fashion it. This earth is the Lord's. And God says in times past, he says, I can take this world like a plate and I can take my world and I can dump off of it the things that are not going to benefit it. And I don't want to be in the dump off. I want to be in the part that goes up. Noah in the ark. There was only eight people that got inside the boat. He preached for a hundred years, saying the plate is about to get turned upside down. Here's the place of safety. The church stands today as that same place of safety. It's safety in the kingdom of God. It's safety in being born again of the water and the spirit. It's safety of coming into that relationship with God and staying in that relationship with God. 
That's the safety. That's the place. And we've been preaching this message for about 2,000 years. And we're going to keep preaching until God shuts the door. And when that door is shut, there's not going to be any opening in. And there's nobody on the inside that's going to be able to force it open. When that door goes closed, it's those that are in are in. And those that are out are out. And the, and the Lord is saying, hey, I want you to be in. I want you to be with me. I want to have relationship with you. Because sin is the issue. In Galatians chapter 2, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Again, I am not afraid to die. But I'm not looking for a way out of this life. Because I'm crucified with Christ. Jesus said, I've got a purpose. I'm going someplace. I'm seeking, a, I'm seeking to save that which was lost. I'm here to crush the head of the serpent. I'm here to destroy the works of the devil. <clears throat> and I'm not going to stop until the job is done. Hey, I'm not going to stop until the job is done. And you have an opportunity to find your life in God, recognizing you're already crucified, whether you know it or not. You're already crucified. Now you can be either crucified with Christ or you can be crucified without Christ. That's your choice. I choose to be crucified right. with Christ. I choose to have his word over my life yes. saying you are where you need to yes. be. And you and I are going to be enjoying eternity together. Yes. You're where I, you need to be. And until the day comes that I truly do leave this life. I'm going to stay crucified with Christ. Amen. <clears throat> that crucifixion verse is found in Galatians chapter 2 verses 19 and 20. Let me tell you where that comes from. That comes from the realization <clears throat> that there were Rome, there were soldiers there on the on Golgotha when Jesus got crucified. It says in John chapter 19, verse 32, Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first and of the other, which were crucified with Jesus. What's that talking about? It's talking about there were, there were two other people on that hill. There were three crosses. There was a thief on one side. There was a thief on the other side. And there was Jesus in the midst. And in the process of this crucifixion that was going on, those thieves started getting in the face of Jesus, saying, hey, you did a lot of miracles, get us out of this situation. And he didn't say a word to them. And they fussed and they complained, and they, they did all manner of, they were saying all th manner of things to him. And it's found in Luke chapter 23, and one of the malefactors, which were hung, railed on him, saying, if you be Christ, Save yourself and us. Hey, that's the world today. If God's in control, why is this going on? Why didn't he stop this? Why didn't he stop? Hey, you want this plague of COVID-19 to get stopped? Why don't you turn to God? Why don't you appeal to the Lord of glory? Why don't you say, God, we need your help. I know I need your help. I need to have a relationship with you. And God, I'm not going to have a deathbed conversion. I'm not going to have a foxhole confession. I'm going to say, I need you, and I need to be delivered from the fear of this planet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There were two malefactors. One of them railed on Jesus. But the other, oh, you want to, you, you want to, you want religious people to get out of your face? Tough. We're going to rebuke you, just like this other thief did. And it says the other answering rebuked him, said, "Hey, you're off base. Hey, you're not saying what's right. Hey, you got it wrong, man." And he said, "Do not you fear God?" seeing that you are in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly. For we 
receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Hey, when you get to the point where you're not accusing God falsely, when you get to the point where you say, God, you're not wrong. God, you're right. And I need, I need some help. Help me to understand how you are right. Help me to understand the yeah. way you are right. right. Help me to understand why my body ages out. Help me to understand why this COVID-19 runs rampant in the world. Help me to understand yeah. that, God, because I need to know what's going on. Amen. When you appeal to God, God can help set you straight. And this one thief said, we received the due reward of our deeds. Sin came in. Death came as a result of sin. And until we get the sin issue cleared up, we're going to receive the due reward for our sinful deeds. Amen. Amen. And the, the thief that was rebuking his partner said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. You know, there's a cry that ought to go out today. Sunday morning, around the world. I don't care where you are. I don't care how you're listening. I don't care where you are in relation to the international dateline. It doesn't make any difference. But there ought, to, there ought to be a cry saying, Jesus, remember me. Jesus, I don't know if you forgot about me. I, I, I just need you. I need to know that you remember me. I need to know that you know who I am. I need your help, God. And the thief had the word from God pronounced under, unto him. And Jesus said to him, Verily I say to you, Today you shall be with me in paradise. We don't have a Savior hanging on a tree that we can go talk to. We're not hanging on a tree. We're, that's the only recourse that we have is to talk to God manifest in the flesh and say, Hear me. I need some help. But what we do have is we have the message that was preached on the day of Pentecost when the men and when the people on that day said, hey, help me to understand what, what's going on here. What do we do, men and brethren? What shall we do? And, G, and, and Peter said, hey, repent. Turn yourself around. Hallelujah. Appeal to God. Face God. Let him tell you what's going on in your mind and in your heart. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. for the remission of your sins. Hey, it's getting the sin question under the blood of Christ Amen. so that it's out of the way so you can have a relationship with God. Sin doesn't stand in the way anymore. It's been put into a place where God knows it's there. You know it's there. But God says, I got it covered. You shall receive the baptism or you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. People get the Holy Ghost. The Old Testament scripture says they're going to be talking in tongues. Just like the Bible says. Man. Why tongues? That's God's sign. You can find that in 1 Corinthians 14. Wherefore tongues are a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. All right, that they might believe. Man. That they might know this happened to me. Man. I got it. I got it. It's the real deal. It's the right stuff. And I thank God for this baptism of the Spirit coming into my life. I am crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, I live. I've got relationship with God right now, waiting for my flesh to succumb to the law of sin, which God put into this world, that the flesh is going to return to the dust from which it came. That's right. I'm not afraid of death. But I'm not trying to do anything to bring it on any faster. I got a job to do, and that's minister the word of God. I got a job to do, and that's live a life of faith in God, no matter where what the circumstances around me might yeah. be. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We have an opportunity to die out the self and come alive in God. Through the born again experience, John chapter 3, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit to enter into the Amen. kingdom. Uh, you know, <clears throat> that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it will. God moves where he wants to move. Yeah. If there's an opening in your heart for the spirit of the Lord to move in, God will move in. 
God moves how he wants to move. God makes it happen the way he wants to make it happen. And the evidence of God doing it in your life is you're going to hear yourself talking in tongues the way the Spirit of God gives the utterance. That's what's going to happen to you. That's how the Spirit of the Lord works. That's how this thing called being born again works. We submit ourselves to God and let him do a work that we can't do for ourselves. God blows, moves, wherever there's an opening for him to move. And you can hear the sound of it, but you can't tell where it comes and where it goes. Hey, anybody know how? You, know, you tell me. How do you know the COVID-19 virus? You know, how, do you, how can you tell me where it's coming from and where it's going to? You got some kind of magical little weebie jeebie device. You go, oh, it's moving over here. It's moving over there. It's moving over here. But no, 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 no. You know how you know? So you got to get tested. Mm -hmm. And then somebody's got to take a culture and they got to look at that under a microscope. Mm -hmm. And they got to peer in and out and they got to go, oh, yeah, yeah, I see one there. I see that itty bitty minuscule microscopic little piece of whatever that says you've, you've got something that you didn't want. You got something that got into your system. Yeah. You didn't ask for it. You didn't look for it. But it got into your system. Well, I'm going to tell you what the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know how you got it? There's the fruit of the Spirit. There's the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues. There's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's righteousness and peace and joy with God now and for as long as life happens on this earth. Hey, you want to look for evidence? Look in the effects Woo! of the Man. primary thing that causes the evidence. Man. Praise God. Praise God. Romans 6 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? you got to know sin is going to tear you down. Sin is going to kill you. Sin is going to rip you up. Sin is going to cause your life to be a mess. And you don't want to live in sin anymore. Amen. Hey, the Spirit of the Lord is talking to some people right now. Jesus. He's telling you the things you've been doing. They're sin. And that sin is killing you. Not the person, not the circumstance, but the sin that you willingly engage in. That's what's killing you. Jesus. The way out is to say, please forgive me, Jesus. Man. And then you commit yourself. I'm going to come alive in God, and I'm going to stay alive in God. Man. Know you not that so many of us, as we're baptized into Christ, we're baptized into his death? Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. Colossians 2 says that we're buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation. What's the faith of the operation of God? It's the Holy Ghost moving Amen. in. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost showing me how to stay free from sin, how to avoid sin, how to live a life of righteousness and peace and joy in my relationship with God while this unstable world just contracts and expands and goes fearful and backs off and goes, I'm going to have my own way. I listened to some interviews of people that were hitting the beach list last week, and they say, hey, I'm living in the moment. Oh, no, you're dying in the moment, pal. Jesus. You're dead in the moment. You think you can have your own way. They're forcing people off the beaches. They're forcing people off the streets. They are imposing fines. They're sending the police after people that get out of line. I was the first time I'd ever seen where police department had to run crowd control at the opening of Hannaford's on Shulman Road. Uh. You know, they're, they're, they're going to offer special hours for seniors at certain grocery stores early in the morning, 6 to 7 in the morning. You know what I'm looking forward to? Showing up at 6 o'clock in the morning and have some grocery store clerk look at me and say, let me see your ID. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to get carded, folks. Oh, my I'm going to get carded to go buy toilet paper. Oh, Can you no. believe that? No, man. Oh, man. The 
told you Acts chapter 2 and what goes on there. We had the opportunity to continue in a dead to self existence until the day our flesh succumbs to the judgment God pronounced on it. It will return unto the dust from whence it was made. I made the statement earlier that there were the two thieves on either side of Jesus. One made an appeal, the other did not. It said, before the sun went down that day, Roman soldiers came along. And they broke the legs of the one thief and they broke the legs of the other, other thief. And they both died. One died for the promise of that relationship with God. The other one did not. And as I read earlier, one, there's going to be a resurrection. One, to an eternal relationship with God, to the other, a not. To a, a relationship that doesn't exist. You can call that, it's not just hell, it's a lake of fire. Amen. Here's my point. Eventually, because I'm crucified with Christ, I'm living a crucified life now. I've subjected the, the lusts of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I've subjected that to my life in God. Why do I, I, I don't do some things. It's not because I can't do them. It's because I've seen the effects of sin, and I don't want sin to rule in my body. That's why I don't do a bunch of things. I've seen the difference between right and wrong. I've seen the difference between good and bad. I've seen the Amen. difference between evil and good. I've seen the difference, and I'm choosing the good. Amen. doesn't mean that I can't have the bad. It's by the power of God in me, I can choose the good. Amen. And I can choose that good every moment of every day for the rest of my life. Amen. Because eventually there will come a point in time. And follow me here if you will. I don't know if the Roman soldier that's coming by to break my legs. It could, it could be the iron rod of a heart attack that breaks my legs and causes me to demise. It could be the iron rod of a stroke. It could be the iron rod of a traffic accident. It could be the iron rod of so many maladies of the body or Things that can happen in life. I don't know exactly what that iron rod is going to be or what it's going to look like. I have prayed. I said, God, if I fall into a sickness, and this is, as you've told other people in the Old Testament, that they're not going to recover. It's a sickness. It's not going to be recovered from. It's a sickness unto death. And you told him, get your house in order. Give him a, a, a space of time. Well, you know, he told me that eventually this... This thing called succumbing to what you said is going to happen to all flesh is going to happen to me. Therefore, I can keep my house in order every day. Amen. I'm not looking for the, the telephone call. I'm not waiting for the text message. I'm not waiting for the My Health Online notification that, hey, it's bad, it's terminal, and, and now you need to get your, your house in order. No, 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 no. I am crucified with Christ. This body is going to succumb to the thing that God said Amen. it was subject to. But my spirit is going to be subject to the one that made me. Amen. Therefore, I can keep my, I can get my house in order today, and I can keep my house in order All right now. today and tomorrow. If tomorrow comes for me, I'm going to get my house in order tomorrow. And if the next day and the next day, I'm going to keep my house in order in my relationship Amen. with God. Amen. Genesis 3 says, and to Adam, he said, Because you hearkened unto the voice of your wife, now don't get off on that. <laughs> you hear me? Don't you do that. I'll get right in that camera. Yeah, I'm looking at you. That's right. Don't you do that. Everybody had their own part to play in that deal. So don't you go down that road, you hear me? Uh, being funny. You're supposed to laugh. And unto Adam he said, 
and you have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Here's what happened. You want to know why the world is in the condition it's in today? Here's the next verse. You need to memorize this. You need to consume it. You need to look at it. You need to write it somewhere. You need to never forget it. God told Adam, Cursed is the ground for your sake. I'm putting a curse on the earth to help you remember sin got you into this situation. I want to give you a covering until I deal with this situation in full, until it's all over. The curse is on the earth for our sake. The volcanoes, the earthquakes, the tsunamis, the plagues, the wars, the famines, the pestilence, the locusts that are eating up East Africa right now. It's all for our sake to help us remember this planet doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. And I need to appeal to the God that says this world is not going to last forever. Right. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. Right. But the word of God is not going to pass away. I want the evidence of that word in me. Amen. Amen. So that the succumbing of all of this world to the things that are coming upon it don't tear me up. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to you. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. Amen. Romans 6 gives us a real strong message of hope. It says, For even unto, for even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin. That means us. We can live a life without sin. Amen. Why? Because we can have the Holy Ghost in us. We can have the Spirit of God in us. Right. And we can listen to that Spirit of God. Yes, we can. We can listen to that and say, I see sin coming, and I'm not going to be a partaker of that. I'm not going to get into those various temptations. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted every which way that temptation could come. That means you're not facing anything different than what God already faced when he manifested himself in flesh. And by that spirit being in that body, he didn't commit sin. That means you that got the Holy Ghost, you listen to me, you got the Holy Ghost, God said, don't sin. Right. Listen to my spirit Amen. speaking to you. Don't sin. You don't have to be in this building to hear that. You can be right there. You, oh, you're listening. Oh, you just heard it. Come on. I can feel the Holy Ghost moving. Why? Well, hey, are you, you know, you, you got your camera looking in my house? No, I don't need to. The God of all creation who is light is right where you're at. Jesus. I don't care if you're listening over the internet. I don't care if you play this back later. That message is still going to come through. And your spirit is going to respond to the spirit of God saying, I want to deal with your sin. I want to deal with this issue. I want to get you under the blood. I want to get you to be with me in paradise now and forever. I want you to have that right now. And if you will just open up and let God do a work in your heart that you wouldn't do in this room, that you wouldn't do out in public, you're in your own home now. You're a homebody. <laughs> God can do a work in your life. Hallelujah. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he was suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. What judges righteously? The Spirit of God and the Word of God. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, <laughs> sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Amen. You need peace. You need an answer to the question of help me understand. Understand this. God says something very critical for you to hear. You are loved. Amen. 
and you are worthy to be loved. Amen. And I want to cover you with my sacrifice. I want to bring you into a place where you and I can have a great relationship now and forever. Amen. If you'll just simply allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. For you were as sheep going astray, but now our return unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. You want, to, you want to understand? Here's what you can understand. All of this business is not a mystery to God. The stuff that you're facing at home, God knows all about it. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is another wake-up call to the world and those that are feeling the effects of God talking to, to them and talking into their lives. God sets the boundaries on the extent of the plague. God sets the boundaries. I am not exempt. There's, al there's already been a couple of apostolic ministers that have succumbed to the law of sin it says the flesh will die. They didn't want that. They didn't ask for that. It affects everybody around them. I'm not exempt. Neither are you. But we do have a God who with his loving arms wants to embrace you. When the world says shut it down, God says I want to lift you up. The world says, stay far apart from one another. God says, I want to get near to you. I'm not afraid of what you're going through. I want to give you peace and comfort and strength in this time of need. If you could just maybe lift a hand. If you could just say something to the Lord concerning where you're at right now. God would like to minister to you. Minister peace. Minister peace. Peace in your heart and peace in your mind Thank you, Jesus. so that you can weather the storm Amen. so you can know that God is a friend that sticks closer than a friend. You can just worship. Give God an opportunity to minister in your life right now. We're going to sing a song in closing this morning. And just go ahead and let these the words of this song wash over you. In Jesus' name. Where do I go when there's no one else to turn to? Who do I talk to? Who do I talk to? When no one wants to listen, who do I lean on? Who do I lean on? passed over, God. Where do I run to? Oh, where do I run to? When the winds of sorrow threaten, is, is there a refuge? Is there a refuge? In the time of tribulation, soul needs consolation to go to the rock. Come on, sing it along. I go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone that the builders rejected. Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. The earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ's solid rock I stand. 
stand when I need shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone that the builders rejected. situation continues, we're going to continue to broadcast here on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And if you need to get in contact with us, you can go to our website, burlingtonupc.org, and there's all the contact information that you need right there, phone numbers, emails, and so forth. And if you have any questions, you have any comments, please give us a call, send us a text, get in touch. Remember, you're not alone. You're not alone. God bless you, and we will stay the course until it's all over.